Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. And I will be presenting uh, the UPF uh, BMAT uh, chair on AI and music. The idea is to uh, go a little bit about uh, the context and a little bit about uh, what we plan to do. And I guess the, the first uh, thing that many people have questions about is the concept of a chair. Uh, in, uh, in English, the concept of chair uh, means a little bit something different, or at least is used in a different uh, context. In Spanish, cathedra is more of a, like a, an initiative of a, of a university, uh, typically in collaboration with an external uh, uh, institution or a company uh, to promote a particular field and to organize activities to uh, kind of help a particular sector to, uh, to uh, uh, follow um, the state of the art of a particular topic. And this is very much the, the, the context of this uh, chair. And uh, to give you some uh, basic facts, uh, so the chair was uh, our initiative. Uh, we applied uh, for it uh, uh, together with uh, BMAT. And uh, it's uh, mainly funded by the, the Ministry of uh, Economy and uh, uh, partly also by, uh, by BMAT. Uh, the funding uh, that between the two institutions is of 1.2 million euros for the first four years, but with the aim that this can be an initiative that can, uh, can continue, and if we succeed in uh, finding other uh, support, so the idea is to maintain it as, a, as an initiative uh, as, as long as we can. Uh, and I am the director of the chair. Okay, uh, BMAT, I'm sure most of you know about BMAT. Uh, BMAT uh, is a, a spin-off uh, of the MTG, was uh, founded in uh, 2005, and it has uh, grown uh, quite a bit over the years. Uh, now has more than 200 people uh, from uh, all over the world, and uh, very importantly, it uh, supports more than uh, 5,000 clients that uh, use uh, their, uh, their infrastructure, their uh, services. So that's... Uh, they, are, they have become a, a very relevant uh, company internationally. And uh, what they do is mainly uh, handle uh, rights of uh, music. Uh, and the idea is that uh, they are uh, trying to monitor all the, the rights that uh, content owners uh, have and uh, r uh, content owners that includes uh, uh, sort of the labels, record labels, the publishers, the musicians and uh, tries to monitor on the, the, the users of this content, being uh, um, TV, being uh, streaming services, uh, being festivals, uh, monitor that uh, content that has a, a copyright and report it to whoever needs to know about that. Uh, typically are the, the, sort of the, the, the management agencies and uh, the copyright uh, agencies, but also many other people that uh, might need to uh, follow what uh, that uh, content is, and especially identify very clearly the, the, to whom the, the money has to go to. And uh, that nowadays is quite complicated, and of a single piece of music, there is a lot of, uh, of uh, copyright that uh, is part of that, and there are many uh, people or many institutions that uh, uh, the, 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 the money has to go to. Okay, so that's uh, BMAT, so that's a, a great partner for uh, this initiative. And uh, the objectives of the, of the chair are very much aligned with uh, a national initiative, which is this uh, National Artificial Intelligence Strategy that was uh, um, started uh, some time ago. And they, uh, they sort of uh, uh, initiate the idea of, fund, of funding a number of uh, chairs with the idea of promoting scientific research, technological development, and innovation in AI to foster the development of digital capabilities, uh, both uh, national talent or also try to bring talent from outside uh, to, to, to advance in that. 
and also develop technology, develop platforms, develop infrastructures that uh, can put Spain in the map of all the AI revolution. And of course, uh, making sure that that technology, uh, that research reaches the stakeholders and uh, the, actually the industries and the, the people that uh, might take advantage of that. Um, so therefore, the, the, the chair is very much aligned with these, but of course, in, in our sector, in our uh, type of activities. And uh, the, the activities that we plan to do are, uh, the core is uh, uh, teaching and uh, uh, PhD, masters, uh, uh, programs, and uh, uh, train people to uh, get into all these uh, technologies. Um, we definitely need to disseminate. So one of the aims of chairs like this is to make sure that uh, people outside our uh, group, outside our uh, research community also learns about that. So there is a, a major effort in trying to, to uh, disseminate uh, what AI and music means and to the different people. And then all the research part. No? So the idea is to carry out uh, fundamental research and covering all the uh, pipeline of uh, music, so from creation, production, uh, sort of uh, di distribution, education, et cetera. But uh, given that this is within a, an industrial context, I mean, this is part of the Ministry of Economy, so a major aim is to make sure that we develop uh, uh, practical technologies, applied technologies, and therefore that we develop uh, software, we develop data sets, we develop tools, prototypes that can benefit uh, uh, music. And even more than that, uh, we uh, also push it and uh, try to make sure that uh, these technologies uh, reach the different stakeholders of the music sector. Okay. Um, and uh, the chair has a, a government, governance uh, type of a structure. It has uh, the director, in this case me, has a, a management committee, which is, uh, is an administrative uh, oversight type of uh, committee with people from the university, people from uh, BMAT, uh, try to make sure that we do things uh, adequately. And nowadays, there is a lot of administrative type of checks and balances to make sure that things are done correctly. But the two uh, main uh, sort of committees that we would like to, to promote and, uh, and make sure that we have some interesting uh, contributions and, and, uh, and collaborations with other people is through the scientific committee, and I will talk about that, so people that could be able to interact with us and also an advisory committee, and mainly industry, that would allow us to collaborate uh, with and uh, get some uh, uh, feedback from, uh, from them. OK, so that's quite an ambitious project. Uh, at least that's what we would like to be. Um, and that's uh, not that easy. And uh, in fact, if you know about uh, uh, the numbers of current AI technologies and what it needs to really succeed in, uh, in uh, doing anything that is relevant, it's not easy. So we definitely have to try to build on what we have and try to make as much advantage of uh, the, the foundation that at the MTG uh, we can build from. And what is that? No, I mean, that, that's a very important. What can we build such an initiative from? Typically, what you would say, OK, we have uh, hundreds of publications, scientific results, PhD theses that have been done at the MTG over the past few years, very much on the topic of AI and music. So that's a great asset that we can build on. Um, at the MTG, we are, uh, we are very aware that that's not enough if we want to have a clear impact. So we have been also putting a lot of effort in making sure that as much of the research as possible results into software, results into uh, data sets, results into technologies that can, uh, can be used. Uh, and uh, we can all think of many examples. For this type of initiative, it's clear that 
things like Essentia, things like Freesound are fundamental assets on which we can build on top of and that uh, would allow us to get closer to something that is practical. But again, these are software, these are uh, publications, and then uh, any initiative requires people, so uh, requires uh, uh, the, a lot of the MTG people to try to help us on that, and we have quite a, a large group, so hopefully uh, many uh, of, the, of the team will be able to help contribute in one way or, or another uh, to this initiative. And uh, yeah, we have uh, a pretty large group for that. But that's not enough. I mean, if you, again, think of any initiative uh, that is being currently uh, developed aiming uh, in this. Uh, a team like this uh, is it's too small. I mean, there is no way that we can do anything significant and trying to compete with the big players internationally. So what do we have also? Well, we have a lot of people that have come through the MTG that uh, feel very much uh, attached to it and that whenever we uh, contact them, they are very much willing to collaborate and contribute. And in fact, most of them are working in this topic and most of them are placed in companies, institutions that, uh, that can open us the door to collaborations, to data, to technologies, to ideas that could be relevant. And so we have an amazing pool of, uh, of uh, people, uh, of know-how that uh, we can try to bring in and that we normally do not interact much with. And of course, we have all the people that have uh, been employed by the university, but also all the master students. I mean, the, the, the SMC master that has been going on for, uh, for quite a long time has, uh, 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 has had uh, many alumni, and again, that many of them uh, are very active in the field and that are very much willing to, to help us. That's a great asset, so that makes it that uh, suddenly we can think of an extended MTG in which uh, we can try to bring their know-how, their ideas uh, to, to, uh, to this initiative. And I already have started uh, talking with them and the, the response has been amazing. So I think we're gonna have a, an amazing group of people that will be able to help us in one way or another. And, and this are, are is gonna be the, the, the basically the scientific committee. So I don't think ever we, we, there has been a project with a scientific community, a community, uh, committee of more than 100 people. So there will be maybe more than 100 people that are part, that will be part of the scientific committee and that we will uh, be able to interact, learn from, and uh, they will also, of course, learn from us. And, uh, and also, very importantly, uh, through the years, uh, we have collaborated with many companies. Uh, many companies are using Essentia, many companies are using Freesound, Many companies are, are very much interested in collaborating with us. And through BMAT, uh, also, of course, BMAT has a huge network of companies that are very interested in this type of topics. So the idea is to identify some uh, key companies that also can, can be part of this advisory board, and that would uh, help us identify things uh, for their sector that uh, we could focus on and that we can collaborate on. So that's, that's great. So again, uh, we have a, a quite a lot of things to build from, even though the group, the MTG, might not be that, that large, but uh, we have a long history and we have a lot of things that uh, we can build from and we should do it in this project. Okay, but uh, now we have to start, okay, and what do we do with that? Okay, we have all these people, this interest, this hype that is uh, currently uh, on this area, and um, what do we want to put our effort on? And the idea is, uh, what do we want to impact? What do we want to uh, uh, sort of uh, make that these results are useful in? And, of course, the, our context is the music sector. And... Um, uh, here there is a semantic thing. Many people uh, use music industry. Uh, I like better to use the word music sector. And the main reason I want to use the, the word music sector because I believe 
the core of what we have to focus on is on the musicians, on the artists. And typically, when you think about the industry, they are left out. They are not part of the, of the industry. No? So I think if we want to succeed in making AI an impactful technology that can change music, we have to start from the musicians, from the people that can really make it happen. Okay? And, um, and in fact, the, the, the other complementary aspect to the musicians are the consumers, which, again, most of the time are also ignored in the equation of when we talk about the music industry. So the consumers have to understand all the issues there. They have to be able to use it. It's not a passive listener nowadays. We need to convert the, the listeners, the consumers, into active part of, uh, of all this uh, new revolution. So for me, those are the two core ingredients of the music sector that we have to make sure that we target, that we have to make sure that we uh, uh, sort of develop technologies for, that we inform about uh, the, the possibilities that uh, all what we do have. And of course, it's fundamental. There is a whole bunch of uh, stakeholders that make the music happen. And we can go through them. And for us, of course, the music education and research is a fundamental component that, again, in music industry normally is not part of. Uh, musicians have to be trained. And, and research is very much part of this, uh, this uh, training of uh, many of the stakeholders that are forming part of this uh, music sector. Typically, the music industry starts talking about the record labels, very importantly, of course. And they, they, they have maintained, uh, interestingly enough, a huge uh, uh, control and a huge weight in the, in the whole uh, music sector. But of course, there are uh, all the uh, agencies, the, the, um, the management organizations that uh, are uh, able to handle the rights and are a very important part of uh, the music sector. Uh, the, the, the tech companies that uh, develop instruments, develop technologies, software for supporting uh, everyone in the, in the sector. Of course, we have the, the music venues and, and festivals. And finally, we definitely have all the streaming services, uh, DSPs, and all the uh, uh, initiatives that are pushing the content on uh, typically online type of platforms. So for me, that's a, a, a quite nice uh, visualization of the music sector. And it's a good uh, thing for us to think, OK, are we really supporting everyone there, or what and why? Can we do better? Can we develop uh, technologies? Can we do research that, uh, in a more fair way, uh, tries to bring everyone in? And there is only, not only a few of the stakeholders that benefit from these technologies. Um, so I think that's important. Anyway, so this is the target. This is the, what we want to impact in a very unified way, but again, having the artist at, uh, and the musician at the center. But now the, the question is, OK, and what are we going to do? OK, so we cannot do everything, but we, are, we want to do a lot. Um, so what is our main research focus that we want to have uh, through this uh, chair? And for me, this diagram uh, um, exemplifies quite well what is currently being done, both at the MTG and in general, many research uh, groups uh, in music technology. And the concept of music understanding, I think, is a, a nice umbrella term. You know? So we want to be able to develop technology that helps us and any stakeholder in the music sector to understand the, the, the data, to understand the, the um, the information that they, they need to process, and out of this understanding, be able to find solutions and find um, uh, sort of uh, applications and business uh, models, et cetera, that can take advantage of that. And nowadays, uh, the typical uh, sort of architecture of, uh, of uh, AI um, encompasses uh, some self-supervised type of uh, approaches with a supervised. No, we typically, we, we think, OK, we need uh, to have a lot of multimodal data 
uh, on which we can train uh, a large model, uh, sort of pre-trained model, and clearly it's not enough audio. We need to have text, we need to have scores in which we can introduce all the newest uh, sort of uh, 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 kind of um, um, new uh, LLMs and uh, new uh, uh, models that uh, can, uh, can do uh, sort of uh, uh, work uh, very efficiently on text and scores. Of course, we would like to work on images, on metadata. So clearly, there is a need to develop uh, large uh, data uh, collections uh, that uh, we can process to be able to have as large of a model as possible from which we can have some embedding that makes some sense. No? I mean, ideally, and of course that's science fiction, but ideally we would like to have some embedding out of that that can capture the, the patterns, the, the, the relationships that all the music data uh, can, uh, can bring and that basically captures the, the idea of understanding uh, what uh, all this uh, data is about. Of course, we are very much aware that that currently cannot solve task-specific uh, problems, so we need to add another set of models that need to be supervised, uh, that need expert annotations, and that uh, can uh, tackle uh, problems that are uh, clearly more uh, task-oriented or problem-oriented. Of the ones that we have been working on and that we believe we, we should be working on here, maybe there is a good representation of them. Uh, tagging, that might be one of the most consolidated areas of work, and SMD has uh, many models for tagging. Captioning, we have been uh, working on that quite a bit, so more descriptive information from an audio. Uh, transcription, that's a fundamental component. We, are, we haven't worked much on that. We have done quite a bit, but we have to do much more on that because that's a fundamental component for many uh, tasks. Musicological description, again, we want to be able to make m music understanding uh, tasks, so we really want to extract musically meaningful information out of our uh, large data or any input data. Of course, uh, and in the context of BMAT, uh, music identification being uh, fingerprinting, being uh, cover song identification, version identification, that's a, a fundamental component of uh, many of these uh, tasks that are, are related. Text query, uh, clearly nowadays with all LLMs that brings uh, very nice potential applications on which uh, you can drive uh, a lot of these tasks with a text query uh, input. Um, source separation, that's another one. And of course, we uh, generative music and audio, uh, that's also an important one. And I'm sure there might be some others. Of course, we cannot do everything. Of course, it's impossible to solve even these ones appropriately, but that's uh, our ambition uh, tells us that we should try, okay? And we should try to get some useful results out of that. But I, I would say that this type of diagram would, uh, 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 would be the one that most people in the field talk about. Uh, if, you, uh, if you ask uh, researchers from other uh, universities, very possibly they will come up with something like that, which for me is interesting because the innovation nowadays, I don't think is so much on the ideas because it has been so much in the media, so much discussed that I think there is quite a, a general agreement of what we would like to get. Of course, the challenge is how are we going to get it? No? And that's where we'll make the difference between one uh, team or one company that succeeds and uh, one that will not succeed. So the challenge is, OK, but how from our context, from this background, from these uh, foundations that we talk about, how uh, do we propose to go about it? And for me, the, the, the fundamental starting point is uh, ethics. And I think also that's a quite uh, a clear uh, set of uh, uh, ideas that many people would agree. And that's clearly something that from academia, from an European context, has to be uh, a priority. 
okay? And that uh, maybe from other contexts uh, might not be the, the <coughs> core driving force. But of course, again, we talk constantly about these things and uh, there is a lot of possible uh, ideas behind that. Let me give you some of the core uh, ideas uh, of ethics that are discussed and that I believe are fundamental, not as an afterthought, not, I mean, many times this idea is, okay, we develop a model and then we kind of do some analysis of the ethics behind that. Uh, for me, that's uh, not the case anymore. Uh, the ethics has to be at the beginning, have to be the, the ideas that should drive the, the, the identification of the problems, the methodology to be uh, developed, et cetera, et cetera. So respect for creative integrity, that's a very clear one, the integrity of the musician, of the performer, of the artist, of uh, whoever has uh, generated that content, and uh, the respect for that, that's a fundamental thing. I mean, uh, then the unit of creativity is not a piece of music, is a creator, is a musician, and that's the one that has to uh, uh, have the, 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 the core uh, uh, value and the one that we have to respect the most. Um, and related to that, that means that we definitely have to make sure that we are able to attribute credit whoever uh, is, uh, is responsible for the data the know-how that we bring into our models. Um, of course, uh, in, in our context, the uh, cultural sensitivity is also fundamental. We want to make sure that uh, we are not uh, continuing on these more Western-centric type of approaches and focusing on just Western pop music and not paying attention to the, the diversity of the, the musics of the world. And therefore, that has to be a fundamental element of what we do. Um, and uh, for us, uh, clearly, uh, music is not just entertainment. Music is, a, is an enriching uh, uh, activity, uh, is an educational activity, is a creative activity. And therefore, the, 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 the making sure that the technologies that we do address the educational and cultural enrichment aspect. Again, that's a fundamental, uh, a fundamental component. Uh, bias, of course, we all talk about bias. Uh, it's impossible to, to get rid of bias. It's, uh, it's part of everything we do. But at least we have to be aware of it. Okay? And so we have to make sure that when we do anything, we are aware of the biases that we are bringing in. Uh, and then, Another element is the, the user consent and control. So we want to make sure that uh, we are not building black boxes. We want to make sure that uh, when a user is involved, uh, they are aware of, uh, of, uh, of what the system learned from them, that they, 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 they are, uh, we ask the consent of uh, whatever data we take from them, and they can uh, uh, have a control on the parameterization of uh, whatever uh, model we, we uh, have for, for them. And finally, uh, the, and it's related to the previous one, but uh, for us, AI is clearly, is a, again, is not a, a black box, is a, is a tool that uh, uh, accompanies us, that has to be part of uh, our daily life, and we have to be involved in every step of the way. And uh, so we have to make sure that AI systems <coughs> are uh, um, controllable and uh, the, uh, the people are in the loop of everything we do. Okay, that's quite high level and uh, it's uh, the typical maybe things that are uh, presented in ethical principles. But the, if we try to go a bit uh, deeper and say, okay, but what are the uh, implications for uh, research? What type of research do we have to do in order to make sure that we follow those ethical principles? Uh, for me, the, the, the first one uh, is clear, and it's one that we have uh, been uh, paying a lot of attention at the MTG, is open science. Okay? I think uh, there might be some disagreement, but I think open science is the ideal framework on which we can do ethically informed and ethical research, uh, making sure that things are transparent, that we share the information and that we do it in a collaborative manner, 
that uh, things are done by collaborating with all the possible uh, stakeholders that are involved in the, our particular research. Another uh, very important aspect is the, how we create the data sets. It's clear that the data sets have to be diverse, have to cover all different uh, traditions, all different cultures, all different uh, characteristics, so that we have to make sure that uh, the data sets encompass uh, the, the reality that we want to, uh, to model, that we want to be involved in, and that we are very much aware of that. Um, and a little bit related with that, of course, we want to make sure that uh, the analysis techniques we use, the data we use, is, uh, is aware of the cultural context in which uh, we do uh, the, the research. And it's not the same thing to describe Indian music than to describe uh, uh, pop, uh, Western pop music. So it's clearly that we need to uh, make sure that the models, the analysis that we do is culture aware. And um, uh, again, related to the kinds of concepts that we said, that the ethical things, we need to make sure that we have technologies that can recognize the content and that can, uh, are able to attribute the content to uh, the people that generated that content. And that's uh, not easy right now. I mean, uh, in, uh, when you have a, a large uh, data set and to know exactly what data was used for that particular output, that's not an obvious thing. So that, uh, that's a, a lot of uh, challenges there. Um, bias, as I said, of course, bias is, is there. It will always be there. We just have to be aware, and of course, we have to try to uh, detect it, and we have to try to mitigate it if that's in the particular context that we are in, we want to uh, do it. So that's an important aspect of, uh, of research that, again, it's uh, typically not paid much attention on. Um, maybe the one that is uh, very, uh, very much talked about and that we have started and that is very important is the idea of explainable and interpretable interpretable AI models and interfaces. So that means that the, the, the results that the model has are explainable so that we know where they come from, we know what they mean, and that uh, the model is interpretable so that the, the model, we can, uh, we can look into it and, and be able to understand uh, what, uh, what everything does and, and that is uh, uh, be able to interpret the different uh, steps of the model. And of course, this requires interfaces, depending on for what target uh, users uh, we want, we need to be able to facilitate that in one way or another. And then related with uh, users, of course, that means that uh, we have to make sure that uh, there is control uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the user in terms of the features, in terms of the model that uh, we are developing, and finally, that uh, we need interactive systems. I mean, we, uh, it's not uh, kind of a, a, a sort of a, a button that will generate something. We need to be able to have systems that are able to be interactive. Okay. Um, of course, we, we, we don't go much in the detail of, of this. Uh, hopefully, we will be able to, to do it in the, in the, during the, the, um, the cathedra. But uh, uh, of all these ambitious uh, things, of course, the, the chair cannot uh, do everything. Uh, so what will be the, the chair, the cathedra, really funding? Uh, the main thing that we'll be funding are PhD positions. and. Uh, you saw there was uh, some announcement on uh, six PhD positions uh, to develop AI models and working on specific uh, research topics, research areas. But again, with this whole uh, framework, this whole uh, type of uh, uh, view that I presented, but if we think of the specific research areas that we are involved and that uh, they can all be perfectly uh, part of all these uh, type of initiatives uh, is uh, sound and music representation learning, multimodal music processing, machine listening, generative music, computational musicology, and music performance analysis. So we would like to really cover all of them and being able to develop uh, models that take advantage of all these uh, research tasks. 
And then at the level of, uh, of the masters, uh, we also want to uh, be able to support a number of, uh, of master students so through internships and make sure that uh, we engage them in some of these things. So we will be able to have uh, internships for uh, quite a number of master students that work in collaboration with us uh, or work with the collaborating companies. No? So we are trying to map some companies that uh, we would like to involve in one way or another, and so we would like people to interact with them and develop uh, solutions that uh, can help them. And that's uh, more or less what I wanted to talk in terms of conclusions um, and to summarize uh, uh, the, what I tried to present. Uh, the first one is that uh, we are committed to make an impact on this EI and music revolution. It might be completely naive, uh, given the, the situation and given the, uh, the, the funding that we get, but we are committed to that and we will try. And I believe uh, we can definitely uh, do something interesting on that. And how are we planning to do that? Well, first uh, is uh, building on our strengths and background. I mean, I don't think there are that many research groups internationally that have this uh, history this network of people, this uh, number of, uh, of uh, alumni that uh, have, uh, are working in these and they can uh, help us in making it happen. Uh, of course, again, we are, uh, want to base everything from these ethical principles, uh, from open science to, uh, to all the, the proper uh, attribution of the content and of making things that are benefiting uh, everyone. Uh, the next uh, one is uh, this idea of music sector in a, in a sort of a, a general way in which we put the musician at the center, in which we want to make sure that the musician is, uh, uh, is the most benefited from all these technologies. And uh, I am sure you are aware that of all the revolutions that have happened all of the last ones, Typically, the musician is the one that suffers the most, is the one that uh, has not been able to benefit uh, the most out of that, and that we would like uh, to uh, sort of uh, change it. And, uh, and finally, uh, collaboration is, uh, is clearly the, the, a key word for us. Uh, it's impossible to do anything uh, of this uh, ambition without uh, trying to establish uh, collaborat uh, collaborations with uh, uh, other uh, people, companies, etc. And uh, that's not easy to, to lead such an initiative, but again, uh, so we will try. And with that, uh, that's it. So uh, I try to give a very high level view of the cathedra. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, uh, few months, we will try to define a little bit better. Uh, and uh, it's not easy uh, on the current uh, situation to, to see uh, how we can build large models, large uh, sort of uh, uh, data sets that uh, uh, aim to, to really capture uh, all the things that uh, we want to do. But again, uh, hopefully with many of you and uh, with uh, all these uh, collaborators that we uh, plan to have, uh, we can make it happen. So. Thank you very much.